This is Port Maddock, a small Welsh seaport on Tramadoc Bay. Today, only the odd fishing boat or coastal tramp pulls into this harbour, where 50 or 60 years ago, the three masted schooners from Newfoundland and the giant cargo ships from Russia and the continental ports dropped anchor. They came for slate from the quarries of Festiniog. In those days, the town was alive with people engaged in the slate trade. Everyone wanted Welsh slates to roof their houses. So the slate came down from the mountains by donkey or by miniature train, and the waiting sailors loaded it aboard. In the little cottages, people still remember and talk of those days. Gwyneth Thomas was a girl then, and she can tell her grandchildren just what it was like. For she lived on the harbor, and her most vivid memory is of the sailors who, after their day's work, danced on the quays and in the warehouses. With nostalgia, she looks back to the days when, from her bedroom window, she watched the sailors or the gypsies from a nearby encampment dancing their jigs. They danced in clogs. Clogs with leather for uppers and wood for the souls. They danced the old traditional dances of Wales, and they added to them many of the steps they'd learnt during their travels to foreign parts. Clog dancing, an impromptu expression of enjoyment. And the dances such as the jig over a broom was a great favorite both at sea and in the gypsy camps. The clogs made their own rhythmic pattern of sound and the music that accompanied them had to be simple and easily transportable. The clicking of bones, the strains of a mouth organ, melodeon, or the plaintive harp. The foreign trade died. The sailors left, and a young girl grew up and resolved to revive the clog dancing of olden days. But first, she had to find a clog maker. John Edwards was the man, clog maker for more than 57 years, and he still remembers every trick of the trade. He takes the rough wood and chops it into lengths called writhings, and it's not just any old wood. Birch and sycamore will do at a pinch, but the very best is alder. It's more supple and pliable. In his workshop, he turns the rough wood into soles. Three main tools are used, the stock knife, the hollower, the gripper. Tools which have seen service for a hundred years and more. With the stock knife, the clog maker turns the rough soles into left and right feet. A pair, in fact. Remembering which is left and which is right, he takes the hollower and shapes the clog. The ball of the foot fits into this hollow, so it must be smooth and have no ridges or rough edges. John is a South Wales man, and he learned his trade making clogs for the miners, for clogs are working footwear as well as dancing shoes. The boys in Port Maddock have caught the clog dancing craze, but they must wait their turn. For Mr. Edwards now is a full-time job trying to fulfill all the orders. And with the gripper to scoop out a cradle for the uppers, another pair is ready for checking and completing. The last job that's done is marrying the upper to the sole. John Edwards binds the welt with copper ribbon, which he finds much stronger than leather stitching. So great is the enthusiasm in the town for clog dancing that he's kept busy not only making the clogs,
but delivering them as soon as they're ready for feet eager to start jigging over a broom or out dancing each other in the intricate Toby step. When he was a boy, John made clogs for miners to work in. Now he's an old man and he makes clogs for boys to dance in. Now the clog maker was busy again in Port Maddock, Mrs. Thomas knew how to train the enthusiastic children. And in the schoolroom where they labored over their maths by day, they practice and practice their dancing by night. Right, children, take your places while you practice. Now, we'll start from where we left off last night with a whole five step. Ready? Go. The steps of clog dancing can tell the story of Port Maddock, for many a load of slates were carried over the mountains to England, and the steps of English country dancing came back with the men. The ships sailed for Europe and the Mediterranean shores, and the Welsh sailors returned with Latin rhythms itching in their feet. Now we'll go on with the next hornpipe step. Go. You've got the wrong foot coming forward. Remember, in Welsh dancing, heel first, then toe afterwards. Now take your partners for a formal dance. Remember, smile at your partners. Now go. In the old original clock dances, the steps were danced as solos by dancers who competed with each other in the intricacy of their steps. But Mrs. Thomas decided that in order to find her solo dancers out of the new raw material, she had to start them all from scratch, in teams. The Port Maddock team were the first clock dancers to appear in public. They've carried off the prize at the Thlangothlan Eisteddfod and have even pounded their version of the Cossack dances at London's Albert Hall. Now that was very good. We'll be able to do it now. That will be all for tonight. But don't forget the dance on Saturday. A dance on Saturday. They are now expert enough to dance before a special public. And their mothers are determined they will be a credit to everyone. The Welsh have always had their Norse and Lowen, evenings of song and poetry, and now costumes must be made and clogs cleaned so that they too can play their part in the tradition of Wales. For Saturday is St. David's Day. David's Day, and the daffodils are out to tell us that spring isn't far away. And to celebrate the feast day of the patron saint of Wales, the team has been invited to dance at the old manor house. It's a great day for the youngsters, dressed in the style of costumes their ancestors wore, and traveling in the old way through the country lanes, over the hills where time stands still. <laughs>
the manor house, an old period house, a place where all things traditionally Welsh are honoured. They used to say in bygone days that there are three things necessary for a man to have in his house. A virtuous wife, a cushion to his chair, and a well-tuned harp. The harp, a symbol of the Celtic love for music. The Welsh are renowned for their musical accomplishments. of the harp and the sharp rap of the clogs on the old slate floor, the past and present meeting when young dancers perform the ancient steps. once more, to put away the clogs and costumes until the next dance, home to a well-earned tea of hot Welsh cakes and melting butter. Hurry up, George, forget your clogs and put your skates on, for there will be many more private parties to dance at. Many more gatherings overseas and prizes to be won at the ice tap pod. Thanks to the enthusiasm of a woman who renewed the simple joys of times long gone for the children of today. Mm -hmm.